clear prophecies, direct prophecies about a prophet coming from Arabia. Isaiah chapter 42. The entire chapter is talking about a prophet coming from Arabia. So Yaakov is born in 570 and the Dead Sea Scroll, they have been dated to 100 BC. So they were written about five to six centuries before he was born. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yet, because th these are the oldest we have. We know they were written, of course. Uh, the originals were written long before that, but they have been copied and copied and copied and copied. The originals were lost. What we do have now is the oldest from this period. And we have, and Allah tells us in the Quran, يَجِدُونَهُمْ مَكْتُوبًا عِنْدَهُمْ فِي التَّوْرَاتِ well, in Jeel, they will find. So there are clear prophecies in Isaiah 42 that talk about an Arabian prophet. Are they explaining that differently? The, oh. Now the Christian now. Yes, they don't Isaiah accept 42. it. They don't accept it, but it's very clear. It's very clear. In verse number 11, if you read it, just don't believe me. Don't believe me. Open the Bible and read Isaiah 42. It'll take you three minutes to read it. The entire chapter. Okay. Just read it. Read it now. Read it now and you tell me who this is. Okay? When, when Abdullah bin Amr bin As was asked, one of the companions of the Prophet, he was asked, what are the signs of Rasulullah in the books of Yahud? He referred to this very chapter. The hadith is very clear. Abdullah bin Amr bin, Abdullah bin, Amr bin As, he read or he explained few parts of this chapter. So have you found it? Isaiah 42. Mm. Chapter 42. What's called the Arabic? A Shia. So, have you found it? Isaiah 42. My phone has been very quiet today for some reason. Maybe there is no reception here. Yeah, that's why. MashaAllah. There is no reception. So, you found it? Read it. Read it in Arabic. Everyone understands Arabic here? He, here is my servant whom I uphold, okay. my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a small reed wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establish justice on the earth. In his teachings, the islands will put their hope. Wait, 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 stop there. Chosen one, he will not shout in streets. He will not harm anyone. No harm. Justice in the land. That will bring forth justice. Yes, carry on. He will not falter or be discouraged. He will not fail. Yes? Okay, carry on. This is what God, the Lord, says. Yes. The creator of heavens who stretches them out, who spread out the earth with all that springs from it, mm. who gives breath to its people mm. and the life and life to whose walk on it. Mm. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you be a covenant for the people and the and the light for the Gentiles. Gentiles, very important. Pay attention. You'll see. 
light for Gentiles to open the eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison. Okay, taking people from darkness to light. Yes? To open the eyes of the blind, to free captives from the prison, and to release from the dungeons who sit in the darkness. Of ignorance, yes. He will release people from ignorance. This, this, this is what he means. Carry on. I am, law, I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. Idols. Are you listening? Yeah. No idols. No idols. Okay, carry on. See the former things have taken place and the new things I declare. New things I declare. This is a prophecy. It's a prophecy. Okay, yes. Before the spring into before they spring into being, I announce to you song <coughs> a new song. Song of the Christ to the Lord. Yes. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord a new song. New song, okay? Pay attention. His praise from the ends of the earth. Yes. You you who go down to the sea and all that in it that that is in it. Mm. You islands and all who live in them. Mm. Let the wilderness of its towns raise their voice. So let the wilderness of its towns, the wilderness, the wilderness. Is, yeah. And its and its towns raise their voice. Let the settlement where the Kedar 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 lives rejoice. This is very important now. Yes, carry on. Let the people of Sela sing Sela. for joy. Sela sing for joy. Mm -hmm. Let them shout from mountain tops. Mountains. Let them give glory to the Lord <coughs> and proclaim this praise in the islands. Hamd, Yani. Glory is Hamd, yes? Tasbih. Okay. The Lord will march out like a champion. Yes. Like a warrior, he will stir up his zeal. Mm. And, sh and with a shout, he will rise the battle cry. War. And will triumph over his enemies. Victory. For a long time I have kept silent. Mm. I have been quiet and held myself back. Yes. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I, I gasp and pant. Mm. I will lay waste. I will lay waste the mountain. Yes. And the hills and dry up all their vegetations. Yes. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pools. Okay. I will lead the blind by the ways they have not known. Mm. Along unfamiliar paths I will guide them. Right. I will turn the darkness into the light before them and make the rough places smooth. Mm. There are these are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. Mm. But those who trust idols who Idols say, again. Mm. Who yes. says to the images you are gods mm. will be turned back in utter shame. Mm. Here you deaf, look, look you blind. Yes, someone book my own here. Who is blind but my servant? Mm. And like a deaf, like a messenger, I mm. send. Who is blind like the one in covenant, covenant with me? Mm. Blind like a servant of Lord. Right. You have seen many things, but you pay no attention. Your ears are yes, open. Allah is talking to Banu Israel. Mm. Yeah. Blind but, servant is Banu Israel. Okay. Your ears are open, yes. but you don't listen. Okay, stop there now. You tell me now, who is this chosen one? He will not shout in the streets. He will not harm anyone personally himself. He will spread justice in the world, other of Islam. He will not fail, nor, nor be discouraged. He will come for the Gentiles. Yani this prophet who is being foretold is not for the Israelites. He is not coming for the Israelites only because previous prophets had already been coming for the Israelites including Isa alayhi salam. What does the Quran tell us? Who was Isa sent to? But Israel. Even in the book of Matthew, we are told in chapter 15 verse 24, I was not sent to anyone but to the lost sheep of, lost sheep of the house of Israel. Isa alayhi salam said, I was not sent for anyone else except the Israelites. When a woman came to him, 
He said, it is not for me to put the bread of the children of God to the dogs. He said to her, you are Gentile, you go away. But this one is coming for Anas. It's coming for humanity. Gentiles mean outside Israelites. From darkness into light. Right? He will take people out of darkness into light. He will put idol worshippers to shame. Idol worshippers to shame. He will, the people now need to sing a new song. Yeah? And the people of Kedar. This is very, very important now. This is everything, inshallah. Once you put it all in context, Kedar. Who is Kedar? Who is Kedar? Kedar is the second son of Ismail uh, Islam. According to the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse 23, we are told that these are the names of the sons of Ismail. Number one is Nabat. Number two is Qaidar. And when you look at the genealogy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he is number 60 from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Number 60. Yani Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he told us in an authentic hadith that he is the son of two. Yes. One of them is his father Abdullah. The other is Ismail alayhi salam. Okay. Hadith Daif. Hadith is Daif. The other one. Let's take the other one. Okay, no problem. I know, I know. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a problem. problem. Let's take the other one. Allah has chosen from Banu Adam, uh, from the Arabs, Allah has chosen Kinana. That's the Hadith. From Kinana, uh, sorry, from uh, uh, Allah chose Ismail, and from Ismail, Allah chose Kinana. From Kinana, Allah chose Quraysh. From Quraysh, Allah chose Banu Hashim, and from Banu Hashim, Allah chose chosen one. Yes? So Ismail, there is authentic evidence, direct evidence from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was a direct descendant of Ismail Alayhi Salaam. There is no doubt. Right? Now he was either from Nabat or Qaeda. Right? Because we have two genealogies. The one in Tabaqat ibn Sa'ad, gives Qaidar as the father of direct uh, ancestor of Rasulullah Now, it doesn't stop there. Sela, the mountain range in Medina. Do you know what it's called? It is called Sela. There's a mountain, there's a mount in Medina, it's called Sela. Qaidar, Sela. You can't get more clear than this. Right? And then, what was this? No, this. Mountains, uh, mountains. Yeah. mountains. Now, when you look at the terrain the Prophet lived in, he was surrounded by mountains, even in Makkah and Medina. Okay? This is Tasbih, which will be announced a new Tasbih, new praise of the Lord. He will come and he will fight wars. He will be given victory over his enemies. He will triumph over his enemies. And again, he will put idol worshippers to shame. When you put all of these things together, it is impossible to think of anyone else. It is impossible. What they are saying? They, they, some of them accepted. Some of them accepted that this is an Arabian prophet. But they are. You see, the problem is the Jalun. So if they you will. Don't say the Arabian, what they, what they are saying, the one you met. If you pick up the writings of the Yahud, they refer to the Arabs as Qaidar, the children of Qaidar, or the children of Ismail. These are the two terms the Yahud use in their literature, in, in classical literature. Like we have classical literature of our ulama, you know all of these. When you look at the, the writings of the Yahud, this is the term they use. And a lot of them, this is why they came to Islam, a lot of them. They came to Islam because of these passages, you know. So that's why Rasulullah sallallahu uh, the Quran, when the Quran makes this claim, يَجِدُونَهُمْ مَكْتُوبًا عِنْدَهُمْ فِي الْتَرَاتُ وَالْجِيبُ These are the passages we're talking about. Okay? Yeah, Have you got the book of Isaiah open? Is it there? They already moved to Medina for waiting for him. No. So... I want to know what they are saying. If they are I think they are saying, still... We are so telling them maybe. the Prophet and the... Uh, what, what they are saying against what we said. There is a debate? No, it's not. And Sorry? Said, and it'd be cool, 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 cool. What? If I say... Okay, if I bring this... Yes. And say... He's the prophet. That's the, I will explain exactly how you explain. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. What they are saying? No, no, no. The, 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 the Jews, the Jews say this is the Messiah. 
Messiah. Who will come? Who will come? Oh. And the Christians say this is Isa, this is Jesus. But it doesn't fit Jesus. What, what is Jesus doing in Arabia? Kedar is in Arabia, according to the same book. The book of Isaiah chapter 21, Kedar is in Arabia. So what is Jesus doing in Arabia? Jesus did not come for Gentiles. He did not bring any justice to the land. The second coming, they start talking about the second coming. When he will come back, he will do it. Okay? But here, the reference is very specific. He will, he is fighting idol worship as he is a chosen one of God. He has something to do with Kedar, Sela, which is a mountain in Arabia. We are writing a document on this, Alhamdulillah, it's coming out very soon, inshaAllah. We are working right now with all the Jewish and Christian commentaries, where it is confirmed who is this. Inshallah, once it's ready, we'll give you some copies to distribute, inshallah ta'ala, on this very topic. So there are so many powerful, strong reasons you can give. Uh, you can come from a number of different angles and explain to the person you're talking to, the Prophet, um, Prophet Muhammad is a true Prophet of God. So now, either the person has already accepted that, yes, I agree. And wallahi, many people have, through this approach, accepted Islam. Many people. They came angry, they came asking questions. When this approach was applied, you know, people, they either go away fully convinced that Islam is the haq, it's the truth, or they go away with sympathy. That they're not, they're no longer your enemies. They don't hate you anymore. Like they came asking questions. Their misconceptions, misconceptions have been cleared, right? After this stage comes the next stage, which now you will ask the person, do you agree with me? God exists. He is one. Ya Allah. He is sent down revelations. And these revelations, the Quran is from God. It's not from humans. And Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet of God. He is a true prophet of God. He's got the profile of a true prophet of God, right? And if all these things are true, then you have two options, either to accept Islam or stop opposing Islam or start asking, stop asking questions about Islam because we believe it's true. We believe it came from God. That's why we believe in it. That's why our women cover. That's why we dress the way we dress. That's why we pray the way we pray because we believe this message is from God. So this person will have no grounds to attack your deen or attack your religion anymore. Simple as that. This is what we call da'wah illallah. You know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to do in the Quran وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Right? So this is what we are supposed to be doing. I think they still ask you one question. What's yeah. wrong with, with those people who was doing that things? Doing what? Yeah. Tell them that they are not following Islam. Exactly. Now, okay, uh, this is now good, good, this is a good point now. Now you have given da'wah. And by the way, what we learned in the last five, six hours, yeah, will be delivered in five minutes. It has to be. It has to be de delivered within five to ten minutes. You have to finish off your argumentation, your case, within ten minutes, right? And once you have done that, you have given da'wah, you have explained the rational basis for Islam, the person is already convinced that, okay, you have solid grounds, solid reasons to believe in Al-Islam, you're not a, just a bunch of fools who are just praying like goats without knowing the reasons why you pray. If she still insists that I want to know the answer, then you can talk about it. Okay? These people are not following Islam. For example, our Prophet told us clearly that you cannot kill women and children even in conflict. Okay? So there are chapters in Bukhari. Malta Imam Malik is a chapter. Babu Nahi An right it is prohibited the chapter of prohibition of killing women and children in war Rasulullah saw a woman in the battlefield in Sahih Bukhari Kitab al Jihad is there he saw a dead woman on the battlefield and he said do not kill women and children okay so Babu Nahi Ankat Sibyan there are chapters right it's there so these people are not following the Prophet so if someone goes and starts stabbing up a woman in London, she's sitting in a pub having a pint and someone comes in and starts stabbing her up, this is not from Islam. Islam does not allow such actions. It's simple. Islam is a very humane, very contained, very civilized religion. Simple. So you are, now you start to give them reasons as to why Islam is beautiful. Right? <coughs> you have already given your rational basis. You have done da'wah. This is your da'wah, your obligation. Done. The person now will be thinking, inshallah, if, if, if the person doesn't come to Islam today, 
He will come to Islam or she will come to Islam a year or two or three. You don't know. You have planted the seed. Your job is what? Plant the seed and leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah wants to bring a tree from that seed, Allah will do it. Okay? You cannot do it. There was someone we know, I don't know if he's alive or not, English brother. He took his shahada at 80. When? 80. 80 years old. You know, Aira, he had this organization in London. Uh, he was with them. I've seen the brother myself. Why? He said when he was 20 years old, someone gave him dawah. 20. How old was he? 20. 60 years later, 60 years later, those thoughts, those words were still in his mind. And at 80, Allah gave them tawfiq to declare the shahada. You know the hadith? That someone who does the actions of people of Jahannam, a hand span away from Jahannam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He puts him in Jannah, and someone who is hand span away from Jannah, and Allah puts him in Jahannam, a'udhu billah, thumma a'udhu billah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uh, respite from such conditions. So you don't know what Allah can do through you. You have no idea. Don't underestimate your words. You may be not very good at expressing yourself. You know, you may be very, you know, you may find it very difficult to give da'wah. But don't give up. Don't give up. Because you don't know what you may say. Even in your broken, you know, sentences, your broken English or your broken language, you might change someone's life by saying something very simple. Allah, you don't know. You don't know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can put uh, effects in sincerity. If you're sincere, you're doing da'wah fi sabirillah for the sake of Allah, Allah will open the doors for you, inshallah. Sure. So, yeah. There's one common question as well. No Muslim, even Muslim people keep asking that. Mm. Why Muslims between them, they are fighting? Okay, tell them <laughs> fighting is a human phenomenon. Fighting, hating each other, different opinions. Ask them when did the different event opinion, different. Well, ask them when did they start. When did this start? Tell them. Ask them. Was this fighting there before 2003? They will talk about Shia and Sunni in Iraq. Yes? Tell them when Saddam was there, though no one was fighting. Because Saddam would have anyone who would fight. <coughs> Saddam would come and he would simply hit anyone with sledgehammer. If the Shia, they tried to make trouble, Saddam would come and deal with them. The Ahl Sunnah, he, he killed so many scholars. Right? So Americans invaded and uh, lo and behold, Shia Sunni are now killing each other. So this wasn't there before. Uh, now you can also explain that uh, fighting is a human phenomenon. Humans fight, humans disagree. It's not because of the religion. The religion is clear that unite for the sake of Allah. Quran clearly states that unite upon the haq, upon the truth. Come to common terms. O people of the book, come to common terms that we worship none but Allah. So Quran always asks people to come to common terms, but people want to disagree and they cause problems. When they don't follow God's teachings, they fight. It's a very simple answer. You can give very, very simple answers. But, uh, you see, in uh, all the nationalities, they've done the uh, experiments. Yeah. They are doing it. You go through videos in yeah. the camera. And yeah. They do experiments in Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, Egypt. Yeah. And they, roughly they are copying each other. Yeah. And you can see. Yeah. Without uh, breaking the video, yeah. you can see someone is hating someone else. Yes. As, as normal people, yeah. Yes. Uh, an Algerian in uh, like uh, Morocco. Yeah. I said, uh, and it's uh, someone go and said, ah, it's Algerian, and you see the other one defending him. No, yeah. he's with us. No, don't worry, we're all Muslim. Yeah. So you know from this experiment of uh, young people doing it. Yeah. Ah, people. Yeah. You know. We still, subhanAllah, have love each other, yes. we love the Islam, we love right. we are completely different yeah. than what's in the newspapers, what's That's in right. the, between the governments. Exactly. But, and we need to clarify that. We are completely different. And you know, one of the best ways to clarify that is that when you are involved in social work, that's one of the best ways to get involved in da'wah. With a motive of da'wah, you should get involved in social work. For example, when this tower was burnt in London two, three days ago, you know, you, you saw the response of the Muslims, yeah. how the Muslims came out. And you know, because the Muslims came out in such large numbers with so many donations, 
There were non-Muslims there as well. There were Christians, there were Sikhs. I saw the Sikh community as well, the dating, right? But Muslims came out overwhelmingly, right? Oh, okay. So, uh, this kids. So, that had such a huge impact that even anti-Islam newspapers, you know, those newspapers who have an agenda to tarnish Islam and Muslims, even they put articles praising the Muslims. Some of them had to say, some Muslims may have helped save lives. They couldn't even say straight, the Muslims helped save lives. Some newspapers stated that. Some other newspapers wrote, some Muslims may have saved lives. So when Muslims do social work, when they are out there doing the work for the community, taking care of the poor or someone who is not well, even in knowledge, if, you know, Muslim community is very small in knowledge, right? But if you make an image, the image is that these people are very good people. They are very helpful people. They are very nice people. They take care of the elderly. They take care of the poor. If there is some, if there is a problem, if there is some, you know, if, uh, for example, if someone needs something, or if there is snow, if you clean the snow from people's gardens, if you go and ask your neighbors if they need any help, occasionally, it makes a huge difference. Wallahi, it makes a huge difference. It changes people's perception of Muslims. I think it's better also to divert their attention from the Islam and the practice of Islam. Yes. Muslims, yes. The Islam, the good or not. They have completely made us look like barbarians. Yes. Completely. The people now are very scared of Muslims. They're very, very skeptical about Muslims. And this is not because um, uh, we are bad, it's because we have not done anything to show our goodness. We have not done enough to show our goodness to people. Well, actually, some of us doesn't do it. But in practice, well. Yes, so exactly. Some of us, you know, uh, and you see, what, what we have to understand is, because we have beards and we have hijabs, and we are very, we stand out yes. very clearly in the society. So when we do something stupid in public, for example, someone spitting in the public, or throwing rubbish outside the car, or breaking the traffic lights, and driving like a maniac, they don't say he's just a human, he's like anyone else. No, he's Muslim. That's why this person is famous. Because the news is helping them yeah. to think like this. So we have to observe a man. Sometimes if you see an elderly person, just for the sake of Allah, cross the road. Help her or him cross the road and others will be watching. Now look how nice these people are. Allah even uh, brothers and sisters are distributing food uh, at that bank, you know, for the tower mm. two days ago. They were non-Muslims, they were like, we cannot thank you enough. This is amazing. Thank you so much for coming out. It changed their perception of Muslims. And deliberately brothers went with, in Sunnah, you know, they're dressed in Sunnah with beards. And there was, a, there was a Jordanian brother with us. He had the, the Ghutra, you know Ghutra? <laughs> he had the Ghutra on his head and he was at the Thawb. He deliberately dressed like that. So people can see that the Muslims are doing this work, this good work. We need to do that. Otherwise, we are in big trouble. Wallahi, if we want to remain in this country for long, for good, and we want our children to be, sorry? No, last night, I think, when somebody was saying, uh, there was a video clip of the, uh, some two uh, non-Muslim girls, they were speaking out, and they were saying that, uh, thank you, Ramadan, thank the Muslims. Yes, okay, yes, yes. That's our life. Yes. But they were, uh, Absolutely. One woman was saying that if it wasn't for these young Muslims waking us up, a lot more people would have been dead. A lot more people. If the police didn't block the, uh, the, the entrance, maybe Muslim brothers would have saved a lot more people. You know, they, but because they blocked people from going in, they said, don't go in. And unfortunately, it took too long to control the fire. That's why many people died. There are many more people dead. You know, they haven't announced it yet. So the point is, anything like this, uh, we should be the first people to be on the scene to help people then we will be known as a kind and generous people. At the moment, at the moment what comes out is these attacks. That's it. Because Muslims are not really involved publicly, socially in other things, any good things. Muslims, if anything social comes out, it is an attack. It is an attack. So they think, people think, okay, maybe these people are either good for nothing or they are bad. But because they cannot see any good from us, which is visible, which is clear. So it's very important. Coming back to the course, so now we have explained the Prophet, or why the Prophet of Islam is the true Prophet of God. Um, there are common contentions people can raise. 
uh, again you can deal with them having given, given them dawa. Next step is possibly shahada. So you give the shahada to the person, take the details if the person wants to accept Islam and keep in touch with the person. Don't just abandon the person and walk away from the person. In fact, bring the person to the masjid, show them the masjid, make them feel comfortable, open the masjid for the people so the people can feel comfortable. In fact, if anything, uh, you guys should do something every week in the masjid for the neighbors, for non-Muslims, you know. Uh, have an open day for the non-Muslims to come in and let them see.